Hi everyone and Happy New Year. Welcome to my podcast. Today I'm going to be talking about the difference between pain and suffering. This is a concept you might have heard of in acceptance commitment therapy as well as in mindfulness. Now let me take a step back and talk about how this came to be the topic that I chose to talk about. So as you might know, I released a deck of mindfulness-inspired self-care cards last year. These are available on my website, which is www.kamarivalentine.com. The card I drew the other day was to breathe into a sensation even if it was for just a minute. This reminded me of a mindfulness workshop I attended some while ago with Bruno Cayune, who is absolutely brilliant. In this workshop, uh, Bruno Cayune talked about suffering versus pain, or he also talked about how Buddhists might refer to this as clean pain versus dirty pain. So clean pain is the actual pain of the experience. For example, the pain that comes when you stub your toe or the pain that comes when you hurt a part of your body or the pain that comes when somebody passes away. Dirty pain or suffering refers to all the ways that we try to avoid and not experience the pain. So, for example, there is the pain that comes from stabbing my toe, but in order to avoid that, I might tighten up and intensing that might intensify the pain. Or I might drink something or smoke something. I might fret about why does this happen to me? Why did I do something uh, silly that caused it? And in doing so, in going there, what I do is amplify the pain. The other thing that I found very useful from Bruno's workshop was his teaching about how we can view things like curious scientists in a non-judgmental way. For example, we can see sensations simply as sensations, rather than label them as our mind is so prone to. So rather than saying this terrible pain, or this unending pain, or all the connotations that come with pain, we might view it in the same way that we view matter, looking at the dimensions of matter considering the temperature, the speed at which the sensation is moving, its density, is it quite uh, dense or more diffuse? Is it heavy or light? And looking at sensations in this way might allow us to detach and step back from the evaluation that we so desperately want to make. So, for example, when there is a sensation, we might say, noticing that as a curious scientist, is that sensation hot or cold? How hot is it? How fast is it moving? Is it heavy or lighter? Is it very stuck together or or quite diffuse? I thought about this card as well because recently um, all of us have been having very sore stomachs. We've been to Bali and... I'm afraid all of our stomachs are still recovering. Now, it might be travel in general, or it might have been the travel in Singapore 
and I don't want to malign uh, Bali, which was incredible. The other day, I was feeling these terrible cramps, and I noticed that I stiffened and and was tensing up. And I remembered some helpful guidance from training that I had done with Melissa Spilstead, who has done amazing work on hypnobirthing. And what um, Melissa recommends, or hypnobirthing recommends, is to breathe into sensations, right? to kind of, rather than stiffening and tightening up, when we experience surges, which is what we call contractions, that we breathe into the sensation. So with nothing else to lose, I thought I'd give this a go. And rather than tensing up with each cramp, what I tried to do was fill my stomach with air and breathe into, notice, almost resign myself to the sensation, just allowing my breath to make room for that. Bruno talks about this in terms of welcoming in a sensation rather than chasing it away and saying, there's no room here, that we say, well, you know, I wasn't expecting you. You're here. You might as well make yourself at home. Come in and then smiling in welcome and making room within ourselves for the sensation. So I tried that and I'm pleased to report that the experience of pain was less and for shorter. And I tried this with my eight-year-old and seven-year-old and was pleasantly surprised to find that they too found this useful. And more so that they were able to go with it and do it, which I think says something. So I'm keen to hear what you think of this technique and whether this is something you've tried as well, this business of noticing and breathing into, making room for a sensation and dropping the fighting, or whether you've noticed that experiences or sensations you have are separate from your efforts to control, manage, or deal with the sensations. And I probably need to say that the ways in which we deal with the sensations can become habitual. For example, in order to avoid certain sensations, we might get into the habit of eating or drinking, or smoking, zoning out, and so on. And these are not necessarily um deliberate strategies that we choose to do in our healthy adult self. These are habits that we might have had to do in order to survive, right? in order to manage painful sensations that we have gotten into the habit of doing and using strategies that have allowed us to, to make do and to get through. Okay, that is it. From me for today, I'm keen to hear what you think. Please subscribe, please share this podcast with anyone you think might benefit. And um, if you would like some audio tracks to support your mindfulness journey, you can find a full listing of my albums on my website, which is www.kamarivalentine.com. Wonderful. Take care, everyone, and talk soon.